Welcome back. So in the last video, we were talking about different modes of uncertainty propagation and specifically talked about uh, exact analytical solutions, uh, either for solving a distribution using a variable transform or uh, solving uh, for the moment, most likely, you know, mostly the mean and the variance in terms of analytical moments. Uh, the first of these is uh, very hard in practice. And the second isn't hard, but only really applies to cases when you have linear models. Uh, so what I want to cover in this video is uh, this next option, Taylor series, which is how we can uh, approximate solutions for uh, the analytical moments for nonlinear models. So coming back to remember the questions here and thinking about how we uh, predict how we make predictions with uncertainty, how we translate uncertainty from our inputs into trans uncertainty outputs is kind of recast as this question of how do we estimate the variance of some model? And now we're gonna consider the case when that, that model is nonlinear. Um, and so we're gonna rely on a, on a pretty common trick in math, which is the idea of a Taylor series uh, of you know, essentially linearizing a nonlinear model taking a linear approximation of that nonlinear model. So saying that the variance of a function is approximately equal to the variance of the linear approximation of that function that comes from the first two terms of a Taylor series. The first two terms being the function when we plug in the mean value of the inputs, and then we have the second term involving a slope, you know, the sensitivity of our function to our inputs at the mean value and then uh, the, uh, the difference between the parameter value and its mean. And that's just comes from, you know, the, the Taylor series we would have, many of us would have learned about uh, in calculus that shows we can approximate any uh, smooth function with a uh, series of polynomials. Okay, so that comes with the concept. The rest is just a little bit of algebra. And it's really this, you know, algebra variances. So first, we're going to uh, expand this sum out over each term, uh, and say that the variance uh, here is uh, going to be the variance of the function at the mean, the variance of the derivative times theta, and the variance of the derivative times theta bar. So I've just expanded out these uh, three terms. And then we can look and see that uh, the function at the mean parameter value uh, with respect to, to theta, well, that's just a constant. Theta bar is a constant. So this is uh, 0. Likewise, uh, the derivative is a constant evaluate when it's evaluated at theta bar. Theta bar is a constant. So this is 0. And so we're left with just the middle term applying. And so we have a, a constant times a random variable. And that's just ends up being uh, that constant squared times the variance of the random variable. So we can say uh, for a univariate model, a model with only one parameter, in this case theta, uh, the variance of the function will be approximately uh, the derivative of squared times the variance of the, that single input or single parameter theta. Uh, this could be generalized to the uh, multivariate case where there's more than one theta in the model, more than one input. Uh, and there we have a sum of variance terms times, you know, if for each of the theta i's, there's a variance term and a, a derivative term. And then there's the covariances between theta i and theta j. Um, and in fact, you know, when we looked at the properties of variances earlier, you know, there was often, there's a two uh, times covariance and that actually comes because you have the case of uh, I and J and J and I. So each term shows up twice. Uh, so that's where the two comes from. Okay. So that's the general case. Now let's uh, actually see how this kind of can be applied in practice. So let's think about a uh, simple case of uh, regression 
uh, confidence intervals. So we have a linear model, uh, just uh, intercept plus slope times x, and we want to know the variance around f of x. Well, we need to know the derivatives, so we can take the derivative with the respect to the intercept, uh, uh, df db v0 is 1, uh, d beta 1 x db0 is 0, so that's just 1. And then we take the derivative with respect to beta 1, the first term is 0, and the second term is just x. And so then we can say um, that the variance of this function is just that first the sums of the different terms, 1 squared times the variance of b0, x squared times the variance of b1, plus 2 times the first constant 1 times the second constant x times the covariance between the two. And so we end up with a, actually, if you look at this from the perspective of x, we end up with a quadratic equation because there's uh, an x squared term, an x term, and a, a term without x. So we just have a quadratic equation describing uh, the variance in our function. And that actually, that quadratic is where the, the regression constant interval gets its classic kind of hourglass shape. Cool. We can extend this to uh, predictive intervals as well. So if we're interested in our predictive interval, then we have the, the intercept plus slope times x plus our residual error. Um, and so the derivatives of the first two are the same as they before. The derivative of the function with respect to error is just 1. And now we have uh, same terms we had before, the variance of beta 0 x squared, the variance of b, 2x covariance, beta 0, beta 1. We need to know the variance of epsilon. Well, that's just sigma squared by definition. That's the variance of our error. And uh, it's common to assume that there's not a covariance between our residual error and our model parameters. Uh, that's a pretty common, and it bears out in most applications as well when you actually solve for these things. They tend not to have much covariance, so we're assuming that's negligible. If it wasn't, then you would have a covariance, a term for the covariance between the residual error and each of the slopes and the intercepts. And so again, you know, if we apply this in practice, that gives this classic kind of hourglass sh shape to a regression comps interval. Um, Couple things I wanted to reiterate here, which is to link back to our, our previous lecture on sensitivity and really kind of drive home that uh, the variance in any model uh, is strongly dependent upon these sensitivities. So this DFD theta that's showing up here, again, that is our definition of sensitivity. So if you look at this graphically, if we have a line, that line, you know, y equals, you know, mx plus b. In this case, the x is theta. So that, that m is our slope, that dy d theta. And we have some distribution on the x-axis with some variance. We transform that distribution through some linear transform. What comes out is some distribution on the other side. And the variance in that distribution, if this is a linear model, this is uh, can be solved for exactly as you know m squared variance of theta because again you know variance of constant times a random variable is that constant squared times the variance of the random variable variance of a random variable plus a constant well that's just you know the variance of the constant is zero and so we again from that perspective recover this dy d theta squared variance of Theta. If our model is not uh, linear, then we are again taking a linear approximation, and instead of transforming the uncertainty in our inputs through our model into our outputs, we are instead transforming our uh, the uncertainty in our inputs through our linear approximation uh, of our model into our outputs. And so, in this case instead of being an exact solution, it's an approximation. The variance in y is approximately uh, the sensitivity, which is again the slope squared the variance in theta.
cool. So now we've kind of finished up our analytical approaches to thinking about uncertainty propagation. We're going to next move on to our numerical approaches.